have you had experience in the Festival of Books, and what what have you uh, what do you think about it in general? Um, yeah, I've had some experience. I've um, I was nominated for best first novel um, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. oh, wow, over ten years ago, and that took me to not just the Los Angeles Book Festival, but to LA for the first time. Then I was still living in Jamaica, and I remember I remember being completely freaked out because Stephen J. Cannell was there and he wrote Rockford Files and A Team and I'm an 80s kid. Mike Mignola was there who wrote Hellboy. And I remember because I nearly missed my own signing line to join his. So <laughs> yeah, I have very good memories of the LA Book Festival. Very cool. The, the 10 years ago, you, you weren't really writing about fiction or fantasy or anything like that. What changed your, your, your path of, of what you wanted to write? I don't know if it changed so much as evolved. I, you know, I've always been interested in speculative, in speculative fiction and stories. Those are the stories that fascinated me ever since I was growing up. Even when I was writing um, quote unquote realistic novels, I was always reading Greek myth before mm -hmm. I went back to it or Greek tragedy and so on involving the gods and so on. So I've always ha um, been interested in that. And all my novels have always had supernatural, magical, unexplainable elements. So to me, it just felt like a natural evolution. I think also, uh, you know, part of this was searching for my own mythologies. You know, as a black man born in the diaspora, our ground zero tend to be slavery. And mm -hmm. surely there's more to, um, you know, blackness and black history and Africanness than that. And it was going searching for my own origin myths and origin stories and origin religions that I ended up writing a novel kind of based on them. Um, okay, so let's get into that. For, for Black Leopard and, and Red Wolf, um, what, what were your specific inspirations to, to bring that to life? Uh, for me, it's a very, you know, in a lot of ways, it's the old story of the sort of the lone hunter, the lone wolf um, on a mission and, and, and interacting with very, very sort of strange lands. In a lot of ways, it's, the, the, it's still a very, very old story. Stranger comes to town or person goes on a trip, mm. which is 99.9% .9 of all the stories ever written. And I wanted to write a story that goes back to, you know, the original myth original storytelling and um which is why it was very important for me to write a novel that can be read aloud that sounds like it was made to be read aloud because i wanted to go back to that original storytelling and the very original stories were told they weren't read i don't want to call it a you know a, a revolution or or anything right now but it, there there's a lot of um a lot of black authors right now that are that are popular, and even with Octavia Butler um, uh, mm -hmm. resurfacing. Um, well, she never went away, but um, is that what do you think of that? Is that a, a trend of the times? Is it just something that's just happening in waves, or what do you think of that in terms of uh, black writers writing fiction and fantasy? I think we're trying to answer big questions that so-called realism can't answer. I, th I think um, we have deeper questions than why is a housewife bored. Mm. Um, we have deeper questions than, uh, and I'm not knocking those novels, because I think those novels are, are crucial as well. But I think we have bigger questions. We have bigger questions than how we got here and where we go from, where we go from here. I think we have questions about where we come from. I think when we have we have questions about what kind of leadership are we in now and have we seen it before and i think when we get faced with those big questions we go back to the myths you know we go back to the old stories um you know margaret atwood said human nature hasn't changed in a thousand years and we know that by checking the myths and i think that's part of it i think we have big questions and we have really a really crazy traumatic um frequently terrible and inexplainable time. And I think when, we, when, we, when we're faced with those, we go back to these stories that break the sort of boundaries of what realism is. So it's, it doesn't surprise me that so many black writers are going in this direction and, and, are, and are you know, looking at both 
past visions and future visions to explain the present. And we've always done it, you know, and we've always found a way to reconnect with that. It's like every now and it's like when a when a, a black a black kid reads story about um, you know, the people who could fly. Uh, it's, it's, it's just one of those foundational things that tell us who we are more so than some, you know, a gritty realist novel, which again, is not a knock on those novels, but I think, I think we have, we have bigger and deeper questions that sometimes don't have answers. And I think those narratives, um, bring us closer to them. In terms of, um, of, of your upbringing, uh, you, you mentioned people as divert, uh, you quoted Margaret Atwood, you, you mm -hmm. talked about being excited to see Mike Mignola. Uh, those are broad spectrums, I, I think. What were your influences in terms of uh, not just speculative fiction, but mm -hmm. writing in general? I mean, to me, the, they weren't broad. To me, those aren't broad differences, you know, because, um, you know, that's how I grew up. I... I don't have genre snobbery and or literary snobbery because I couldn't afford it. Mm. Uh, it's it's the only category I needed for a book was that it was next. So and that could be anything. It could be anything from you know whichever X Men comic I could steal or borrow without telling the person I'm borrowing it, or um, everything from that to you know a novel that somebody left over. In, the, in their English class and it's been sitting there a week and nobody's grabbing it, so I grab it. Um, to what I could afford or to whatever was in a used bookstore or to whatever people had in their libraries, whatever was in the library, whatever was just lying around. So when, I, when you have that attitude in literature, you end up reading everything. Um, you know, and um, so I was reading sci-fi and um, most of the sci-fi I was reading was actually novelizations of books. It took me, it wasn't until I was watching, for example, Empire Strikes Back on TNT way back in the 90s that I realized I have never seen this film and I know everything about Star Wars. Mm. You know, I know every single thing there is to know and I realized I know it because I read the movie tie-in books. So I read everything. Um, and I think that is why I have such an omnivorous attitude to literature and why to me it doesn't seem like a jump to move from one genre to the other. Now, Black Leopard, Red Wolf is part of a trilogy. Mm -hmm. uh, how far are you into we the... Keep, the keep <laughs> I know everyone will ask you that. We're in a pandemic. <laughs> True. You know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm pretty hard at work at part two. And, um, you know, I'm pretty hard at work at part two. And, you know, we, um, you know, my publisher likes to be, likes to take pleasure in knowing that I meet my deadlines. So that next one should be out, let's say soonish. <laughs> okay, do you, do you write parallel? Like are, are there other stories that you will, um, that you might, you know, kind of delve into or, or is it kind of, you know, it's, it's focused one track on one? It's one focused, track. it's usually one. And um, which, which can suck because it's always when you're creating that creativity happens. Mm -hmm. So, you know, while I'm writing one book, I end up with that idea for dozens more. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to like sort of have four different type of notebooks to write them down. Usually by the time I finish this novel, finish a novel, half of those ideas die with them. It's like, yeah, this doesn't seem like such a good idea anymore. Um, some stay. But yeah, I, I tend to focus on that one thing. Um, and and reading. reading, I can I can read tons of books at the same time. But writing... Uh, because, you know, for me, I'm in the zone when I feel like I'm not writing. I mean, I'm actually in somebody's world and just working like a reporter. Mm -hmm. And that to me is, is that is the zone I go for. And when I'm there, you know, I'm, get, I'm trying to get the story. So I'm there focused on that story. Well, thank you very much for sitting with us. I know you have a, a, a bigger panel uh, on, on the way soon, but uh, thank you for, for coming to the Festival of Books and, and being here and, and giving us your time. Thank you so much.